For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Welcome, gospel revolutionaries around the world. This is Michael Lilborn Williams coming to you live from the bonus room above my sister's garage. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And yes, we are on the gospel of peace. I, uh, I turn 68 years old next month. That's August the 16th. Keep the cards and letters coming. <laughs> a Lamborghini. Let's see. No, I, w I wouldn't drive a Lamborghini if you gave it to me, but I could sell it and turn it into cash for the ministry. <laughs> uh, guys, we uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, the gospel of peace is the cornerstone of the gospel. It is the gospel. Without the gospel of peace, there is no gospel uh, at all. There is no good news at all. The uh, issue of this gospel of peace is that there is only one gospel of peace. Uh, there are two other gospels that are being explained out there in a great deal of detail. And uh, one is that, uh, is that God is still angry. The gospel of peace says that God is no longer angry. There's another one out there that says that God was never angry. But you see, neither of those is a gospel at all, much less a gospel of peace. Um, so we're not harping on this because we disagree with people. We are staying on this because everything about the scriptures, everything that I can find in my heart says that the power of the gospel is wrapped, wrapped up in the gospel of peace. Now, uh, we've gone back over this and really what Isaiah is saying. Now, see, Isaiah was speaking, thus saith the Lord. Isaiah wasn't saying, now, let me tell you what I think about God. This is him speaking as a prophet. He is speaking the words of God. Oh, I bit my tongue. <laughs> he is speaking the words of God. That is what is happening here. So uh, please don't uh, fall into the position of saying that uh, Isaiah was speaking on his own behalf or under his own impressions. That's just underestimating God, and it's also setting aside the scriptures as having no power at all. Jesus said all the scriptures are about him. Uh, so if you find Jesus in the scriptures, you've found, uh, you've found what the scriptures mean. If you've found something about you in there, You've not found it yet because there's nothing about you in the scripture. Uh, there's so much about Christianity and also about mysticism that's causing people to find an awful lot about themselves. Uh, it's about me. It's about my life. It's about what God wants me to do, what God doesn't want me to do. Um, I have found in this process of understanding the gospel of peace, something has happened to me. Something very profound has happened to me the more or less, whichever way you want to say it, that I see myself as a, uh, as a target, a personalized target of salvation or redemption, the greater my peace grows, the greater my mental and emotional stability grows, the more I feel and actually am able to engage with people as my equals. Uh, the more I used to personalize this under Christianity, the more I felt alienated from other people because then their experience wasn't my experience. And you know, what's, what am I to say about your experience? Well, that's their experience. Who's, uh, nobody's experience counts here. 
It's what took place at the cross. And uh, I understand this desire for a personal spirituality. I, I personally gave up on one many years ago. And I chose the gospel over a personal spirituality. I don't have a personal spirituality at all. I am one with you. You are one with me. We are one with God. God is in us. There is nothing that I take about this personally. Jesus is not my personal Lord. He's not my personal Savior. He's not my personal helper, getter out of trouble. Or there's, there's none of those things to me. I never think in those terms anymore. When I used to think in those terms all the time, and I still had a lot of depression. I still had a lot of anxiety. I still had a lot of these things going on uh, because then I was left to wonder when is God and when is not God and why did God and why wouldn't God and why did God for them but not for me and why did this happen and will this happen? And you see, if you get all excited about the itty bitty little bitty bitty things that God's doing for you all the time, you're also going to have to question about all the big, big, big things that God doesn't do for you. I'm calling you home to peace, to the gospel of peace. I am calling you home. I think the same as Paul did out of the world of Christianity, out of the world of a personal spiritual relationship with Christ. I'm calling you home out of that. It doesn't diminish Christ. It diminishes you from being so all fired important in the matter. You are the object of God's love. You're the object of God's mercy. You're the object of, we all are, but see, we all are equally the objects of. We're not the participants of. We're not the ones that get it engaged and see how it works and do how it do. And I, I, That's all gone from me. And I apologize to any of you that that may offend that uh, I don't have a personal spirituality. I just have a gospel. And, and it's called the gospel of peace. I, as I was getting ready for tonight, I was thinking, you know, where did Paul mention the gospel of peace? And uh, other than the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, other than as though we needed somebody else to get involved here. Uh, uh, the directness of this and the clarity of this understanding is that God, the same as the promise that went out from uh, to Noah and his generation, I don't care if he only promised it to Noah. Everybody on the planet has benefited from it. That is the emphasis of this prophecy and of this, thus saith the Lord, not thus suggesteth Isaiah. <laughs> um, the, I've got to find levity in this because if I didn't, I'd just break right down and cry. Um, I really would. I would just break right down and cry at the disqualification that many of you teachers out there are putting on the scriptures and you're inviting people to settle for a personal experience, your personal manifestation. You're waiting for your day, your nirvana. You're no different than any other religion out there. There's a gospel of peace that cuts through all this mess, that did cut through all this mess. And God included everyone. Uh, as I was looking through this, I realized, of course, Paul is the only one who preached the gospel of peace. And he brings it up two times. So we're going to touch on those two times. Uh, we'll see how quickly we can do this. Uh, I've, we've gone through this so much. I'm not going to try to read every verse in the text uh, that we're going to. Uh, suffice it to say, we have gone through this uh, in uh, great detail. I don't know how many times we've covered the book of Romans from uh, chapter 1 all the way through the teachings of Paul here in Romans. And uh, uh, here Paul is debating this issue. Now this is where Christianity gets the guts of their belief in whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord and that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. But you see, Paul is debating this issue. In the middle of this, Paul says, uh, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And verse 15 before that, and how shall they preach except they be sent? 
As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings about good things. So here we have Paul announcing this gospel of peace. But you see, the gospel of peace Paul is introducing here, it's not just here, but in this chapter, he is, he is saying the gospel of peace is in direct contradiction to whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Paul is saying the gospel of peace is in total contradiction to what was being taught at this time. Uh, by Christianity, and this is how Paul brings it out. After he's, he quotes, uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, he says, but I say, have they not all heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all, to, into all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest to them that didn't ask. That's the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is in direct contradiction to your personal experience. It's in direct contradiction to it. It's in direct contradiction to your personal faith. It's in direct, the gospel of peace is in direct contradiction to you calling on the name of the Lord and getting a response. The gospel of peace is saying that this is the power that God demonstrated in his own right that he has given unto us this powerful uh, declaration that came not by our faith or not by our calling. This is the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? It is that God has united God and man as one without my, anybody asking for it, without anybody's personal faith, without anybody's personal experience. Man, as I go through Facebook and I look down through the, the preachers and teachers and I click on so much, and every one of you out there, every one of you out there are appealing to people about a personal experience. And you're forgetting the cross. You're forgetting totally the work that God did through, God, through Christ by his own will, not by your faith or your personal experience. And yeah, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I see so much of it and I see so many well-intended people, but I hear your struggle. You're struggling and struggling with this and looking and trying to look for validation and, and hoping that it's just right because if you don't get it right, God didn't get it right. Is that what we're supposed to believe? Is that if you don't get it right, God didn't get it right? No, God got it right. So you don't have to get it right. You just have to understand the gospel of peace, that God has made absolute peace with you completely and the whole world. I stopped taking this personally and stability started filling my life. I can't even tell you what it is like to live in this mindset that the whole world is redeemed, that I am one with God, you are one with God. Uh, that that there is nobody who is left out, that I, it doesn't take a personal experience, a personal Lord, a personal Savior, that this great gospel of peace really has done something very powerful. Paul makes comment about this again in the book of Ephesians. He is uh, going through, the writer of Ephesians is going through here and mentioning the armor of God. Now, if you go back in the Old Testament, you'll find out that the Old Testament says that the full armor of God is Christ. Christ is the full armor of God. So as you read through this, remember that, that it was prophesied in the Old Testament that the whole armor of God was Christ himself. He said, uh, 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 don't have time to go through all of it, but uh, he said, and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, part of Christ, 
The armor of God, which is the gospel of peace, is Christ. It's Christ himself. The, the breastplate of righteousness is Christ. The helmet of salvation is Christ. These aren't things that you put on. This is Christ, and you've already put him on, whether you know it or not. We just need to adjust our minds to the thinking of the finished work of the cross, not this struggle stuff. Man, every time you go to church, you hear about what you're supposed to change. You hear about what you're supposed to do. You hear about what you're supposed not to do. You hear about how you're supposed to do more, how you're supposed to give more, supposed to act more, uh, supposed to be more. And it's like, where do you find peace in that? You know you don't measure up in any of those things. Your faith is not good enough. Your asking has never proven that God is real. You've asked for a lot, and you've gotten mostly nothing. What does that prove? It doesn't prove that God is not real. It proves that your faith is not real. It proves that your personal experience is not real. Man, I tell you, I can't tell you what's in, in uh, the fullness of my heart and my mind. I gave it up. It's gone. This personalizing the work of the cross as though it was something that was that that is that I'm involved in making happen. I didn't do anything to get God to redeem the world. I didn't do a thing to get him to do that. And my redemption was wrought in Christ 2,000 years before I was ever born. How could I have something to do with it? Paul goes on to say, having, you know, both of these where he mentions the gospel of peace, it has to do with the feet. <laughs> you shouldn't go anywhere without shoes on. Don't go anywhere without the gospel of peace, folks. Don't go anywhere without being convinced that all of this Man, I tell you, I just want to cuss out all of this bull about your personal faith and, and your asking and your pleading and your doing. These little churches around here are full of tiny little congregations, great big congregations. Every one of them are being taught the same thing in just a little bit of different twist to separate you from them and them from you. But that's what is separating you. You all think that you've got an up, a leg up on how to ask or how to believe, or how to get God to bless you. Speak in tongues a little bit. You give a little bit more. Uh, discipline your children a little bit harder. Mm. Paul said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of what gospel? What are we going to do? Take this out of its context? There's the mystery of just one gospel that's been mentioned here. It's the gospel of peace. Folks, the gospel of peace is a mystery that was revealed 2,000 years ago. And here we are still stumbling along with Christianity and with mysticism and with every idea on the face of the earth of how to get God to bless you. Turn on John Hagee, turn on Kenneth Copeland, turn on all of these crazy idiots and sit and listen to them tell you what you now still lack. I'm free from it. I am free from it. I'm free from it. I'm in Christ. He is in me. And I don't go around trying to figure out what the will of God is. I just live my life. I am at peace. And it does pass all understanding. I, I know. Now, this is not a peace that I work up. It's a peace that I live with every day, all the time. It's just there. It's just always there. For which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul said concerning this gospel of peace, he said it put him in bondage. Paul said the gospel of peace put him in bondage. 
when Paul started telling people, it's not by your faith, it's not by you asking and getting a response, it's the gospel of peace, it got him in bondage. And he said, I just need the boldness to say this. And man, I tell you, that's the only thing that I desire in this life is the boldness to break through all of this superficial spirituality. Who do we think we are? To look at somebody else and define who they are spiritually when it's God himself who decided who we would all be spiritually. Regardless of our actions, our deeds, our, our religion. Man. Man. You're one with God in spite of your superficial spiritual doodahs. <laughs> That's a scriptural term, you know, doodahs. <laughs> God, I love you people. I get on here and I do this as an act of love. I know that where I stand is not a popular place. I know it's not a widely accepted opinion, but I tell you what, I feel it so strong. I know, I, and I got all the scripture in the world to back this up. Nobody has still come to me and showed me where it says that God was never angry anywhere. It just doesn't say it. We've got to stop diminishing the scriptures diminishing the gospel of peace by telling people this is a personal thing, a personal insight. There's no personal thing, personal insight to the gospel of peace. It's a mystery that was revealed 2,000 years ago. The power of this gospel, if you want a personal experience, folks, my personal experience has been in detaching myself from external spirituality. It's gone from me. It's gone. But what's in me is a peace and a mental and emotional stability. I can't even tell you where it came from except the acknowledgement of the truth of the gospel. We love you here. I um, I don't have a lot of big reasons. I'm not making a fortune doing this, folks. So I don't have a whole lot of big reasons to be doing this. Uh, I am persuaded that this is the truth. I am persuaded that we're quoting the scriptures. If we're not, please show us where we're not because the scriptures are valid. They do mean something, that is for sure. We want you, we want you to enjoy the peace that you have with God. And we want you to enjoy every day that you have with peace of mind and stability. We love you.